All right, we're going to get in the Word of God. Get your Bible open. Turn to Joshua, the book of Joshua, chapter 24. Now, it's just like in school. You sit here and listen, but it's a whole lot better in school because uh, this means something, and it's true, and it'll help you be ready to meet God. Joshua, chapter 24, tonight, and uh, normally, pre preacher going to preach on Joshua 24, it's uh, not this subject. Matter of fact, I've never heard this subject preached on by another, I've, I've, I've done it years ago, but never, uh, I've never heard anybody else preach this. Uh, Lord, give this to me years ago, and I'm going to give it to you tonight. Joshua 24, verse 26. Joshua 24, and verse 26. And Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God and took a great stone. It is so time for the demons to holler out of the fireplace. All right, good. Nope. Y'all pray about that. Some little birds back in here. And said, look at verse 27. And Joshua said unto all the people, Behold, this stone shall be a witness. Great big rock. For it hath heard all the words of the Lord. Good night. Did you see that? A rock heard the words of the Lord. That's what he said. Look at it. This stone shall be a witness unto us, for it hath heard the words of the Lord, which the Lord spake. It, the rock, shall be a witness, lest ye deny your God. Ain't that something? He said that rock stood up, and it heard the words of the Lord, and it was a witness to that whole crowd of what he had done. Rock. All right. I brought one tonight, and I'm going to show it to you. It's right here. There's plenty of them out there. Is a rock. Most people in here tonight would think all that is is a stupid rock. But Joshua set it up, and he said, it's going to be a witness. It hath heard. I didn't know a rock had ears. Don't see him. But he said, it heard the words of the Lord and it witnessed. I thought, Lord, that thing's doing better than a lot of our church members. That's right, come on. It heard the words of the Lord and was a witness. So, the title of the message tonight is, Are You Dumber Than a Rock? <laughs> now, now look, up, look up here tonight. That's what everybody said. Well, he's dumber than a rock. Well, I would hate to think that that rock is smarter than me. But alas, alas, it's too bad that that rock is smarter than most of y'all. I hate to say that. That's awful. Are you dumber than a rock? How many of you here tonight believe you've got more sense than that rock right there? Well, all of you do, obviously. I mean, some of you are admitting it. My goodness. Uh, 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 the, the truth is, the truth is, I'll tell you the smartest young person in here tonight, the smartest teenager in here tonight is the teenager that says, look, I'm dumb, somebody help me. Preacher, you tell me, mom and dad, lead me and show me what to do and I'll listen to you. That's the smartest kid in here. The dumbest kid in here tonight is the one that said, look, I, I, you don't have to tell me. I know what I need to do. Don't tell me, don't try to run my life. I know what I, you're the dumbest person in here. The smartest kid in here tonight is the one that says, I'm stupid, help me. That's right. Uh, the, the, the dumbest person in here tonight is the one that thinks you know everything. If a man thinks he knows everything, I mean, when he's nothing, brother, you think you stand, you fall. Now, when you think about this little subject here tonight, uh, you, you probably think about, uh, all right, now I'm, I'm gonna tell you something, kids. We know we got an edge on y'all. Whether you want to admit it or not, us old people, we got an edge on you because we have been young and now we are old. So we have been where you've been and now we have been where you have not been. A lot of young people say, oh, you old people don't understand. Yes, we do. We know exactly, we went through the same junk 
that you're going through and we went through the same temptations you're going through. Don't ever think you old people don't know what they're talking about because they have no idea what I'm dealing with. Yes, we do, don't we? We know, we've been there. We didn't have all the technology you've got, but the same old sin, same old temptation, same old wicked thoughts, same old ungodly stuff uh, faced us as faced you. So. We've been where you've been, we've been where you ain't been. You ain't never been where you ain't been, you just been where you've been. So if you ain't been where you ain't been, then don't try to act like you've been somewhere where you ain't been. <laughs> or something like that. You know what I'm talking about. You ain't never been where you ain't been. So listen to somebody who's been there. You got that? Now, I will now tell you that's smart. There's lessons you learn in life. And there's some things you can only learn by experience. We're living in a time where they think education is God and you, all you need is an education. I'm not against education if it's biblical. But I, some of the dumbest people I've ever met in my life had a lot of education. Yeah. Education don't give you brains. Education don't make you uh, uh, wise. Uh, I've, I've met people, I go to the bank and a girl behind that bank has a four year degree and, she's, and I can figure in my head the money and change before she can do it on a computer. And she's sitting there trying to figure it out and said, well they taught us this way and taught us this way. Yeah, no, four plus four is eight. You see, uh, it's just common sense ain't too common no more. I like we learn things in life let me give you some lessons that we learn. We learn this, never judge a person until you've been in their shoes. That's a good lesson to learn. You can't sling mud without losing ground. That's a good one. You can fool some of the people some of the time and all the people every now and then, but you can't fool God, ever. That's a good one to learn. Amen. We learn other, uh, like a Smith and Wesson beats four aces, you know, stuff like that. Uh, uh, never play leapfrog with a unicorn. Just great lessons of life that you learn going down the. You can't sin and get by. You, we've learned that, some of us, uh, down through the ages of life. You cannot sin and get by with it. That's uh, right. I've, I've learned, uh, we've learned you can't uh, do wrong without it coming back on you. Let me give you a test. Let's just give you a test here tonight. I'm gonna now give you an IQ test. Have you ever had an IQ test? Intelligence quotient tells how, how smart you are. Not educated, smart. All right? Now, I want all you girls here to help me. All you girls, all you girls right here. Boys too, if you want to, we care. Now, you help me. I'm gonna see if you can spell. And then I'm gonna ask you a question. So you talk to me like that. Uh, I'm gonna say four plus four is? Eight. Oh my goodness. There was three people said it, ready. Four plus four is? Eight. Four plus four is? Eight. eight plus eight is? 16. 16 plus four is? 20. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll make it easier. 20 plus two is what? 20. Talk to me. 20 plus four is what? 24. All right, what does this spell? S I L K. Eight people said it. The rest of y'all went. What does it spell? S I L K. No, I said it. S I L K. What do the cows drink? Water. If you know it, hey, if you know it, shut up. If you know it, shut up. All right? Cows don't drink milk. That means you don't, you don't know what to talk about. Okay, I'll give you another chance. What does this spell? S H O P. What does this spell? S H O P. What does this spell? S H O P. What does this spell? S T O P. What does this spell? S L O P. What does this spell? S H O P. What do you do to green light? Okay, so far, 
So far, you're in the retarded area. I mean, I, but I'm, I'm going to give you a chance. I'm going to give you a chance to redeem your dumb self. All right? Everybody do like this. Do like this. Not the 666 sign. We're going to do it like that, okay? So it ain't the 666 sign. Now, now I want you to poke your head through that hole. You ought to look at these nuts. Look. You see how dumb you are? You ought to see them trying to do like this, too. All right. So far, you are 0 for 3. We had a couple. Okay. Let's do another one. See if I know another. See if you got any sense. All right. I. I'm going to uh, I'm, I'm going to try to sell a, a deaf man a pencil sharpener. How do I sell a deaf man a pencil sharpener? No, no. Don't buy a pencil sharpener! No, no, he's not. He's not. <laughs> he's completely deaf. He can't. Okay, y'all got it. Y'all got it. Like, like this. No, one of them, how do you do a pencil sharp? Pencil sharp. All right, you got that? All right, now, I'm going to sell, I'm going to sell a blind man a pair of scissors. How do you sell a pair of scissors? Yeah. He can't say that. Do you want to buy a pair of scissors? He, he can hear. <laughs> There's going like this. No. So, now that we have established the fact, you say, well, my friends and me are smart. You heard about them people that thought their friends knew everything? Did you hear about the kid that thought his friends knew it all? Is that going down the road one day? And they, they said, man, I'm telling you, we've seen the office wreck down there. This guy wrecked a motorcycle and it killed him. It was awful. Two of them, one riding them up, and the guy's on the back of the motorcycle. Wrecked and it killed both of them. And they said, was they dead instantly? He said, no, but see, up the road there, it got real cold. And the guy on, on the front of the motorcycle had stopped and, you know, turned his jacket around backwards, you know, so he'd keep him warmer and put his collar up around there like that, zipped up back like that, and he had his jacket on backwards flying down there, and, and they wrecked, and they, got, they said they both got killed. And they said, did it kill both of them? And he said, well, he said, that man on the back, he was dead when we got there. And he said, that guy driving, he was dead by the time we got his head turned around, right? <laughs> they killed him. <laughs> oh, for, for the rest of you, we've got to go on here tonight. <laughs> About half of you sitting there like, <laughs> you're like the blonde that went in. The, someone still ain't got it. Just act like you got it. <laughs> like that. They broke his neck. <laughs> Just now hit her. Just now hit her. Man, doesn't it? Girl goes into a, she goes into a place and the blonde walks up to this. She said, I'd like a cheeseburger. And the woman somehow said, this is a public library. And she said, oh, I'm sorry. I'd like a cheeseburger. <laughs> You know the one about this blonde sitting there in the house one day? She calls up her boyfriend. She said, you got to come over here and help me right now. you got to help me. He said, what is wrong with you? She said, I'm going to pull my hair out. She said, I'm working this puzzle, and I can't get none of the pieces to fit. None of them, none of them. Well, he said, well, just look at the picture on the box, you nut. And she said, I am, and I can't get none of it to work. It's just this big rooster. And he, she, he said, will you come and help me? So he goes over to her house and walks in there. She's sitting there with her hands in her hair like this. She said, I can't get one piece to fit. And he looked and he said, you idiot, put them cornflakes back in that box. <laughs> now, with that as an introduction, I want to give you three thoughts here tonight. Three things. Number one, you are dumber than a rock if you won't praise him. You're dumber than a rock if you won't praise him. Amen. I'm telling you, the Bible said, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Amen. Let the heathen, 
even. Uh, praise the Lord. Praise him for his goodness. Praise him for his wonderful works to the children of men. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him all the time. You know what your problem is? You think when somebody praises God, they're a little bit weird. As a matter of fact, some of these old timers like Brother Charles or somebody stand up like one of these people and really start shouting. I've seen young people just go, oh my goodness, oh, I can embarrass. Listen, there's something wrong with you. You're dumb than a rock. You know what it said? It said that rock was a witness. It stood. Let me show you that in the Bible. You don't believe what I'm saying in the Bible? Turn to Luke chapter 19. Let me show you what the Bible said. In Luke chapter number 19. Let's see if it's in the Bible. I'll say you tonight, Luke chapter 19, and look at verse number, oh, uh, let's see, 37. Luke chapter 19, verse 37. And when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a what? Loud voice. Don't you listen to these people that say you're not supposed to holler and praise God. They praised him with a loud voice. And for all the mighty works that they had seen, verse 38, saying, Blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of them said, Master, rebuke thy disciple. Look at verse 40. And he said, I tell you that if these hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. You know what Jesus said? He said these people was going, hallelujah, praise the Lord, amen. And people said, good night, y'all, shut up, shut up. And the Lord said, if these didn't praise me, rocks, rocks like that right there would suddenly burst into praise. I'm telling you, rocks will praise God if you're dumber than a rock, if you won't praise him. I don't care if you are 14. I don't care if you are Mr. Cool. I don't care. Some of you boys, you're too cool to praise God. Some of you girls, you're too, you're too, I mean, oh, you're too uh, whatever you think you are to praise God. It wouldn't hurt some of you 14, 15, 16 years old to stand up and throw your hands up and ball your eyes out and say, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I'm not going to hell. Jesus saved me. I'm saved by the grace of God. You're dumber than a rock if you won't praise him. I'll never forget. I'll never forget. See, you think somebody's weird that jumps up and hollers in church. I think you're weird if you don't. Jesus said, if they didn't do it, rocks would cry out. You're dumber than a rock if you won't praise him. You say, well, Brother Danny, you're old. Listen, I was 18. I got saved when I was 18 years old. I had a little old MG. Most of y'all don't even know what an MG is. But the closest thing you'd know to it would be a Mazda Miata. Little bitty tiny car, two-seated car. Two seat, and had a little gear shift on it about that high, and I drove that thing all over the place. And I'd been saved about three months, so I was 18 years old, teenager. I was driving down the road, and I was going around them curves. Some of y'all know where I live, going down 70, like going to right there, them curves, just like this. And I was going around them curves, right down where uh, my son-in-law Todd's shop is. And I was going around the curve back and forth like this. And all of a sudden, something started bubbling up in me. And I started thinking, I'm saved. I'm not going to hell. And I'm not going to burn, Lord of God. I'm going to live with Jesus. And it started coming up in me. And it started coming out right here. Like the Lord gets something in you and squeezes it. And tears started coming out. And next thing I know, I was going, whoo, whoo. And I was praying for every church going down that road. I didn't know. They might have been Jehovah's Witnesses. I, I, Lord bless them. Lord bless them. Lord bless them. Lord bless them. I had the best time ever. What? No music. No band playing. I mean, no synthesizers and lights and, and no, no, no great music. Uh, band on stage, rather just the joy of the Lord bubbled up in my soul. And I thought, glory to God, I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved by the grace of God. And I pray 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And then this guy went witnessing all day. I was about 19. And I stood up in church one night, and honest to goodness, I'd never done this in my life. I was just like you. I thought people were crazy did that. And I was sitting right, like over in this middle of the section right here. Here it come again, bubbling up in me like that. Next thing I know, I was crying. Next thing I know, I had my hand like that. Next thing I know, I was out in the aisle doing that like that. And I don't remember what nobody else did, but it, it blew up in there that night. The Holy Ghost, listen, you know what the devil has done? The devil has knocked a shout out of most churches tonight. Now, I'm not talking about a bunch of fake stuff. I ain't talking about a bunch of put on. Buddy, I'm telling you, people used to come to church. Buddy, I'd see a hand go up, there'd be a hallelujah. Listen, if everybody in here started praising God for what he's done for us, there's no telling what God might do in this place. You know, people were too sophisticated. We're too cool. The truth is we're too backslidden worldly to praise God and we don't have a heart for it. I'm telling you tonight, you're dumber than a rock if you won't praise him. You get to thinking about you, I'm not going to burn in hell. Lord have mercy. You say, well, I'm smarter than that. Well, no, you're not. You're dumber than that. I've actually seen people say, them poor old crazy people. Bless you, Lord. I got, you, you might be the ones crazy. Yes. Bless you, Lord. Heard about the blonde. She's down there fishing. She went fishing with her boyfriend. And he was sitting there and he was pulling in one fish right after another. And she's sitting over there how are you catching all them fish? I can't catch one. He said, it's mind control. He said, my mind is superior to the fish's mind. Now watch this. Here come a fish swimming down through there. He said, now watch. The, the superior mind dominates the inferior mind. The fish comes down through there. He said, mind control. Mind control. Mind control. That fish went over and bit his, pulled him in. He said, that's all you got to do. She said, okay. Our brain is superior to the fish's brain. That's right. So she said, I'm going to try it. She had hers in there like that. Here come a fish down there. She said, mind control. Mind control. Mind control. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the fish's brain was superior. <laughs> That's how dumb a person is. Lord have mercy, y'all. There ain't no hope for some of you people. Just laugh when everybody else does. Don't let us know. Number two, you're dumber than a rock if you won't please him. You're dumber than a rock if you won't praise him. You're dumber than a rock if you won't please him. How do I know that? Joshua said it stood. It stood. Are you going to stand? When you go home, are you going to stand? He said, I'm going to go out to my friend's party next week. You're dumb and rot. It'll stand. You won't. If you got a brain in your head tonight, you will make up your mind tonight. I ain't going to that party when I get home. Well, listen, we've been to camp before, and we get home on Friday afternoon and had kids. Their friends call them and say, we're going somewhere tonight. We're going to party. And they'd, they'd send me a text and say, Brother Danny, they're already calling me. The devil's after me. And I told them I'm not going. I told them I'm not going to be in part of that. I told them I'm not going to be a part of what they're doing. I told them I'm not going to, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to that, see that movie. I'm not going to that concert. I'm not going to that dance. You're smart. You're dumber than a rock if you won't please him. Now, I'm going to tell you tonight, kids, you heard it last night. I preached on drugs. I preached on alcohol. I preached on immorality. I preached on all that stuff. Listen, brother, you put stuff in your body that alters your mind. You know, alcohol kills brain cells. You know that, right? When you put alcohol in your body, it kills brain cells, and brain cells don't reproduce. And we sown here tonight, you need all that you got. I'm telling you tonight, brother, you don't want to be dumber. You want to be smarter. A smart teacher teenager will go home and say, I may not have no friends. I may not have but two or three, but I am not going with y'all. I am not going over there where they're smoking dope. I am not going over there where they're drinking alcohol. I am not going. I am not. There's your smart teenager. Make up your mind that here tonight. You're dumb and a rock if you won't please him. If you won't please him. 
if you won't please him. We had a girl at camp one time. Some of our folks heard me tell this years ago. My job on the first day of camp was just sort of go around and make sure everybody had a place to stay, settled in, you know, miserable, somebody's miserable or something. And there was a girl about, I don't know, 16. She's standing over here leaning up against this tree like this with a miserable look on her face like she's about to cry. And everybody else went around having fun. So I went up to her and I said, ma'am, my name's Brother Danny. Are you all right? She said, no, I'm not. I said, what's your name? She said, Karen. I said, what's wrong? She said, I hate this place. She said, I didn't want to be here. They brought her from Mobile, Alabama, where that group from Pensacola come up and was with us at camp. And her boyfriend did not want her to go to camp. Now, anytime you've got a boyfriend that don't want you to go to camp, let me tell you what he's thinking. He's thinking, she's going to get right with God and probably dump my sorry hide or at least not cooperate. And that's why I don't want you to go camp. Afraid you'll get right and dump it. And so she said, I'm miserable. I hate this place where he's stupid dresses. Why do we have to act? This is crazy. And I said, look, you're here for a week. You might as well just, you might as well just try to enjoy it. Well, we had on Tuesday night, like this right here tonight, I preached. We had a little we had a little amphitheater like going up. We didn't have a place to have church. It was outside in the yard. And it went up like that. And I preached that night and gave the invitation. And when I gave the invitation, the power of God moved in that place. And here come Karen down that aisle. And buddy, she come down through there holding her face like that, just a bawling, and hit that altar. And I said, glory to God. Somebody went over and prayed with her, and she got saved. She got saved. I shook her hand and said, Karen, I am so glad that you've got saved. I am so happy that you got saved. And she enjoyed it the rest of the week. Back then, nobody had cell phones. You didn't even know what happened back home till you got home. Amen. Good old age. And buddy, when she got home, they was waiting on her to tell her the news. Her boyfriend, his friend, her best friend, was in a car wreck the night before and killed all three of them. And if she had not come to camp, she'd have been in hell. She'd have been in hell. She missed hell by three days. Three days! You're dumb in a rock. Listen, if you're here tonight and you're saved by the grace of God, God's been good to you, you are crazy. If you'll go home and party, you'll go crazy. Uh, you are crazy. You're, as I say, if your, brains is, uh, if your brains is water, it wouldn't be enough for a flea to gargle with. That's what the old preacher said. I'm telling you something, brother, you hear me tonight, you're, 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 you're dumber than a rock if you won't stand for it. You know what you ought to do? You ought to make up your mind when you go back to school, you're going to take that Bible with you to school and if they don't like it, tell them to jump in the lake and swallow a snake and come back up with a bellyache. You don't don't have to say that. That's what mama always said when when we was little. Tell them to jump in the lake, brother. Listen, take that book. I know teenagers that's got on fire for God and went back home and took a King James Bible to school every day in a public school. He said, they'll make fun of me. Ah, you'll be all right. You ain't no sissy, are you? Hey, you ain't no big cry baby, are you? Look what Jesus has done for you. Look how he stood for you. Look what he did for you on the cross. It ain't much to stand for him. Last, and I'm through. You're dumber than a rock if you won't praise him. You're dumber than a rock if you won't please him. You're dumber than a rock, finally, if you won't preach him. If you won't preach him. Years ago, when I first got saved, when I first got saved, I knew I was saved, but honest to goodness, I was afraid to meet the people that I went to high school with. And the reason I was, let me tell you why. Because as soon as I got saved, I heard that one of the buddy, my buddies said, they said, Danny Castle got religion or something. And they said, oh, he won't last two weeks. Man, that hurt my feelings. 
And I heard, and I thought, good night. Is that what they're saying bad stuff about me? And then I was in Hardy's in Marion, and one of my high school teachers was sitting across the yacht room, and I heard her say, that's Danny Castle. He's got into some kind of religion or something. Like, he used to be a good, nice guy. Now he's cr gone crazy. You know, like, and I hurt my feelings. And I scared the witness. I wanted to, and I knew the Lord's in my heart, but I was like some of you. I was, I was just scared. We had some boys that went uptown, and they said, we're going to go give out tracts. I said, I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm glad I'm saved and everything. I just don't know if I can do that. And I always, if we'd go out of town where you didn't know nobody, then I could do it. It's easy to witness to people you've never seen before and you never see again. Who cares? You know? I mean, you know, but man, it's hard in your hometown. You know, the hardest people in the world to witness to is your family, your immediate family, then your friends, then the people you go to school with, people living in your community. That's the hardest people in the world. If you can witness there, you can witness anywhere. Amen. And Lordy mercy, it was hard for me. And I always thought these girls will stand up, girls y'all's age, will stand out on the side of the road with a big sign that says car wash for cheerleading or for, for a, even for a trip or something like that. And they go, woo, woo, car wash, woo. Yep. Give them that sign on the back of my forerunner. Yeah. Fools make them all get sin. Yep. Let's go stand out in the, out the street this Saturday and hold that up. It's like, gosh, I'm not going to do that. Why? Tell me why. Hey, old Rebecca will. She did, so they, she did it at the flea market, right in front of a crowd of people. Some others will. These girls will. Some of them will. The Santa Big Sign fools make a mock at sin. Hey, go stand out in front of the movie theater in your town with a big sign that says fools make a mock at sin. You say, hey, you'll be all right. Preach him, brother. There's nothing in the world. You know why the devil wants to shut y'all up? Because you could start a revival in your hometown if you got on fire for God. But a young people get on fire for God, it'll spread like wildfire. Let me tell you my story and I'm done. I didn't want to witness. And I run around with these boys. There's about six or eight of us, Brother Kelly. We'd all get together and we'd get together and we'd pray and we'd pray. And, and we was in, I live in McDowell County. McDowell High School, and we'd go down to Morgan where our church is now, Burke County, and I could witness easy. But I just couldn't do it at home. Because I just graduated from high school the year before, and I, I, was, my, I was the, uh, had the MVP player my, on my basketball team. We went to the state playoffs. Everybody knew me, and I thought, ah, man. I mean, I don't know if I can do this. I wanted to, but I was chicken. You know what? Let me tell you how the Lord got me. Come on, brother. One night, we all got filled with the Holy Ghost down in the band. And, buddy, we got down to praying, the power of God come down, and we woke up and said, Glory to God, it's good to be saved. Let's go witnessing. So we left McDowell County, Marion, went down to Morganton, and went to Hardy's in Morganton. We got out of that van. And I set, grabbed me a handful of tracks. I come out of there like a roaring lion. I said, we're sinners. Show me a sinner. I feel sorry for the first sinner I see, buddy. He's going to get it. I want to see a sinner. Come on, bless God. Where are you? I'm ready to witness. I mean, we was fired up. We went in there. I was, I think at that time, I still might have just turned 19 in my hometown. Town blow it. We walked in there, no sinners. I couldn't find a sinner. I was looking around, sinner, me and about five or six boys had our Bibles. We didn't just have tracks, we carried our Bible. About that time, somebody said, Look! And I looked outside, and brother, there was a bus pulled in. It was long as this, it looked like it was long as this building humongous bus right on the side of it said McDowell High School <laughs> and by about 50 cars right behind it I got sick 
Oh, you got that sick feeling. Oh my, oh my goodness. It was the football team, the cheerleaders, the school teachers, the whole blessed school pulled in there. Here I stood. Had my hair cut. Had my tracks. My uh, 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 uh. I turned green, brother. I thought I was going to throw up. And I thought, man, if I wasn't with these guys, I'd shoot out the back door. But I can't do that. I done prayed up and filled the Holy Ghost. And right then, kids, listen to me. I count that one of the most important nights of my life. Because right there, that day, I made a choice. And I mean, they all knew me, buddy. I mean, they all knew me. I've been, we've been in the newspaper all over town playing ball. And I remember I stood there that night and I sort of said a little prayer and I said, all right, Lord, you've done this. And I believe you caused this to happen. And you've done more for me than these people. I didn't care. Some of them had to be Christian. Didn't care if I went to hell. And if you'll help me, I'm going to stand. And buddy... When I said that, something went. <laughs> I felt like I was 10 foot tall and bulletproof. And buddy, they come in there that night. I said, all right, y'all, this is it. Yeah. They said, Danny, you ain't like that, are you? I said, yes, I am. And I had a Bible under my arm. And I said, yes, listen, y'all, you can do whatever you want to. I'm going the other way. I'm going with Jesus. My mind's made up. And buddy, they said, we heard you wouldn't go to the movies no more. We heard you done this. We, why'd you get your hair cut? I said, listen, y'all, I got saved, and I want all y'all to get saved too. And the power of God, and I'm telling you from that day till now, I ain't never been scared of them since. Now it's the other way around. When I pull in the parking lot, they go, oh, <laughs> let's get out of here. <laughs> Amen. You know why? I'm going to preach it. I'm going to preach it. I don't care if they think I'm crazy. I'm going to preach it by God's grace. They can think I've lost my mind. I think they've lost theirs. And we'll find out one day, won't we? You're dumber than a rock if you won't preach it. He said that rock was a witness. A witness. I don't know if you know this or not. One teenager every hour dies in a car accident or, or, or a drug-related overdose or something. They're dying like flies, and you might be the only person in your community that can reach them. You know the best bus workers are? Teenagers. Oh, come on. You know who the best witnesses are? Young people, they're not going to listen to old people much like they will y'all. I guarantee you, this whole crowd right here, we could all get a handful of tracks and go to the Walmart over in Greenville and it'd shake some people up. Are you dumber than a rock? Let's stand by our hands.